I feel like everything and everything's happened all at once. Can Boris Johnson survive this for, for the next year? Will he still be prime minister in 2023? Uh, well, I can't say whether he'll be prime minister going into 2023, but I don't think that he will lead the party into the next general election. I think uh, um, a rebellion on this scale is very difficult uh, to survive, and I think he'll find that his authority uh, in the party uh, ebbs away over the next few months. D does he realise, and will it change the policies that he'll put in place? I don't know whether he realises, but I know that Boris Johnson's um, instinct now will be to reach for popular policies, do the populist thing, uh, and try to offer people what in the short term they think they want. Unfortunately, we're at a point in our economic cycle where what we need is a dose of realism. Um, we have some challenges in this country to face. The sooner we get to grips with them and, and face them honestly and openly, uh, the quicker we'll get out of them and the better chance we've got of resuming uh, a strong growth path and rebuilding living standards. But so 40% so of his own MPs in the Conservative Party voted against him. Why are they against him? I mean, this is not, this is not necessarily about party gate. No, I think it's deeper than that. I think it's, um, and, and to, to be honest, my, my colleagues are very focused once you get to the tipping point in a parliament, the second half of a parliament heading towards the next general election, very focused on the question of whether we can win the next election, whether they can hold on to their seats and their jobs. Uh, and I think the verdict is that um, Boris Johnson is no longer, uh, on balance, a vote winner for the Conservative Party. He's potentially a vote loser. Uh, and I think um, the message is, is, is seeping through that the party needs to change direction. And for anybody taking over the leadership of the party, to be able to rebuild trust with the British people is going to take some time. It's no good doing this six, nine months before a general election. It's going to have to be done sooner rather than later. Why do they think he's a vote loser? Uh, the evidence around them, the polling evidence, and we'll see uh, you know, evidence in by-elections um, over the coming weeks. Do, do you think he should resign? Well, um, it's a bit academic, really. That isn't um, in the nature of prime ministers, and I'm not at all surprised that the prime minister's position is that he's won the vote, and even if he'd won it by a single vote, he will soldier on. Um, that was also Theresa May's position after she won a confidence vote um, in 2018, but the writing was on the wall uh, from that point onwards. Authority just uh, quietly drains away. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a cumulative um, effect, um, and I think we'll see a drip feed of, uh, unfortunately, bad news around the UK economy over the coming um, months that is going to make it much, much more difficult for the Prime Minister. But can, can you draw real parallels between Theresa May and what's happening to, to Boris Johnson? Or because the personalities are so widely different, Boris Johnson will, will also deal with it differently? He will deal with it differently, but I think the other big difference is that, of course, Theresa May had no overall majority in Parliament and was therefore immediately vulnerable to defeats in Parliament. Boris is much less vulnerable to defeats in Parliament because of the size of the Conservative majority, although clearly if even um, a half of the people uh, who uh, voted against him on Monday were to vote against um, the Tory whip in the Commons, uh, the government right. would be badly defeated. But that, that's probably not the way it's going to happen. I think this is probably going to be about a slow attrition of authority mm -hmm over the course of the summer and into the autumn. Um, so, so, Lord Hammond, talk to me a little bit about how it works in your Conservative Party. Are there, you know, behind the scenes conversations now about who could replace him? Are they coalescing behind a candidate or is it still all out in the open? No, well, I don't, I don't think they are coalescing behind a candidate. And that, of course, is part of the problem for the rebels and part of the um, good fortune of the Prime Minister, that there is not an obvious successor. Wind the clock back. Uh, six months and Rishi Sunak looked like the obvious inheritor building a very strong position but he has been damaged by the um, perhaps unfairly but he has nonetheless been damaged uh, by the uh, issues around his wife's tax status and I think just by um, you know at a time of cost of living crisis people being reminded that he comes from a very different um, set of circumstances from most of them so I think, you know, most of my former colleagues in Parliament do not regard Rishi Sunak as being um, the likely front-runner no. in an early competition. If it, if it goes long, he may have a chance to rebuild um, his position. So, so who is the front-runner? I mean, we hear about well, Jamie I, Hunt, I, I, Liz Truss. 
Yeah, well, all of these, all of these people will definitely be runners um, in the race, and um, you know, Nadim Zahawi, Tom Tugendhat, the people who are spoken about very often um, among colleagues. I mean, they all have strengths, they all have weaknesses uh, as well, and there will be a lot of jockeying for position over the coming um, weeks. The, the, the exquisite dilemma for cabinet ministers now um, is how to position themselves. Um, nobody who's in the cabinet um, wants to immediately put themselves offside with the prime minister, yeah. but every single one of them, however strongly they're professing their undying loyalty, yeah. is privately thinking about when is the moment to make their move to distance themselves from the prime minister if he's ultimately going down and positioning themselves either to be a runner or at least to have a role in the cabinet of a future leader. But th this is extremely difficult because, you know, as opposed to your boss, Theresa May, it seems like Boris Johnson will not tolerate any dissent. So that's, that is another big difference. Theresa's response to um, uh, the vote of confidence was to try and build a broader coalition, to try and reach out to people within the party who she thought were at least amenable to reason and, and, to try, and to try to be conciliatory. Um, uh, Boris, I think, will take the opposite approach. Um, certainly my experience with Boris was that um, he takes a very extreme view of anyone who challenges him personally. Uh, and if he can find out who the 148 are, I'm certain that their <laughs> prospects will be very limited over the remaining um, period of his tenure in office. How many of the 148 you think also voted against him because of what's happening in tax and the fact that, I, I mean, I was told um, in a private conversation by a big, large party donor that this is not a conservative government just because of the tax increases. So there is definitely a mood among a lot of traditional conservatives that this is the, the government's policies are not truly conservative um, policies, that it's far more interventionist, far more big government than they would like to see, far, far higher taxing mm -hmm. government than they would like to see. But of course what the Prime Minister is trying to do is manage the coalition that he built yeah. in 2019, which is, was never going to be a sustainable coalition. On the one hand, traditional conservatives who want to see smaller government, lower taxes, on the other hand, the new Tories, if you like, in the red wall seats, who've been promised um, lots of spending on infrastructure and levelling up, who've implicitly been promised higher wages um, for themselves, they want to see a bigger, more activist government spending more money right. and taxing more, so long as it's taxing somebody else more. Of course, no, nobody's in favour of more tax if it falls on themselves. Um, but there's definitely a constituency out there that the Prime Minister does have to think about yep. who would like to see more taxes on other people in order to fund their priorities. And then where's Labour in all of this? So should they be doing better? Should, yeah, they should certainly they have... should. So, so why aren't they? So the other great um, advantage Boris Johnson has uh, is frankly a very poor uh, exploitation by the Labour Party of his difficulties over the last, yep. um, uh, the last months. Uh, it, it really is or has been an open goal and they failed to kick the ball into it.